Well, that was Cripple Creek, played at uh, pretty much at the speed that it's usually played at. And now we're going to break it down and learn how to play Cripple Creek, and we'll have our first tune under our belt with both the left hand fingering and technique and the right hand fingering and rolls and what have you. Now, the right hand we just spoke about, uh, roll patterns, really, uh, we, there are things that we do to build up the right hand execution, uh, but when we add the left hand fingering for things, techniques that we're going to learn right now, slides, pull-offs, and hammer-ons, then we call those licks. And that's pretty much how people are going to communicate with you as a banjo player. What lick do you use on this tune, or where do you play that lick? And the lick is simply what you do on the right hand, some kind of right hand pattern with how you finger the left hand. Now let's start with the basic slide on the left hand. And I'm going to show you one that, that we'll use just in all the time, really, and especially when we're playing Scruggs style. And a slide is when it's two notes. We want it to be two distinct notes. So on the left hand, let's do a slide on the third string. We're going to put our middle finger behind the second fret. And once again, you want to get it directly behind the fret so that it sounds better and clean. And when we strike the note, we simply slide one fret up to the third fret. That's what the slide is, all right? I'm going to strike the third string with my thumb on the right hand and slide to the third fret from the second fret. Two notes. You don't want to get like that. You don't want to mute the string or lay the wrong way. It's Then maybe hit the next note. Okay, that's the slide. The next main technique that we see all the time with the left hand is a pull-off. And that is simply, we'll do that again on the second fret of the third string. We finger the string at the fret, strike it with the right hand, in this case I'll strike it with my thumb, and pull. I'm pulling off. I'm pulling from the second fret of the third string to open, and I'm pulling towards the second string. Now at first when you do this you'll be kind of getting hung up a little bit, hitting the second string and what have you. So it does take practice. You have to sit there for about 800 hours and just do that. Where there are two distinct notes. As you play, the more you play, the more you'll build up calluses on your fingers as well and that will help. Scruggs used to say get it behind his fingernail maybe and pull off. Similarly a push off is just pushing the other way. If I hit the string and push towards the fourth string. That's a little harder when you're going from, op from, from a fret to open. Push-offs are used mainly when you're maybe fingering at the second fret and strike on the third fret and push. So we've got the pull-off, the push-off, the slide, and uh, actually the one other technique is the hammer-on. And I'll do that. That's where you strike the string and hammer on to a fret. So I'll strike the fourth string with my thumb and hammer on to the second fret. All of these techniques mean that you are making two notes out of one hit with the right hand. You don't, you're not going for the slide. You're going. So you want to make sure you get these techniques very cleanly. And so that we can hear the two notes because as you speed that up, that will get lost if you don't do it clean and very properly. Well now we have the right hand techniques, the roll patterns, and we have the left hand techniques, the hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides, and even some of the partial chord positions. So we're ready to learn Cripple Creek. And we'll do that by thinking of our count. Uh, a big thing that we have to know when we start these tunes is where the tune comes in on what beat. So Cripple Creek happens to come in on the off beat, the two and. And we're going to place the ring finger on the left hand on the second fret of the first string, okay? And with the right hand, we're going to do what we call a pinch. That means we're simply hitting more than one string at the same time. You can pinch two or three strings. In this case, we're going to pinch the first and the fifth string. We've got the ring finger on the second fret of the first string, and we're going to pinch and then slide up to the fifth fret. We won't be striking the first string again at the fifth fret, so we want to make sure that there's a very clean so we hear the two notes that I spoke about before when we slide. So we've got that second fret, and if we're counting one and two and one is when we get to the fifth fret of the first string. Okay, and then to continue, we hit the fifth string, and we go back to the first string, open, then the second string, open, 
Now we're going to that C chord we practiced before, and we lay all the fingers down at the same time. The optimum is to not, you know, put the ring and then the index and then the middle, but when you practice making the chord positions, lay all the fingers down at the same time, and you're in that C chord, second fret one, first fret two, second fret four, and on the right hand we go five, two, one, five, fifth, second, first, fifth, then we pick our fingers up. We're going back to G, so we hit the first string open. And then we pinch one and five. So we've got the first half of the first part of the tune. And tunes are instrumentals, and songs are simply tunes with words. And so in the same way that we talk about songs with a verse and a chorus, with the instrumentals, we name the parts, A part, B part, C part, whatever. So Cripple Creek has an A part and a B part. We have just played through the first half of the A part of Cripple Creek. 